Now let's go to the addition of collinear vectors. So collinear vectors occur in the same straight line and can be added up using vector addition. All right. A resulting parallel horizontal vector, Rx, is obtained by adding all the parallel vectors by means of vector addition. Similarly, for a resultant vertical perpendicular vector, Ry, is obtained by adding all the perpendicular vectors. Okay, all right, please note that your Rx resultant x vectors are horizontal and your results in y vectors are your vertical vectors okay we never add our x to our y we always keep it the same so our x add them all up and our y add them all up okay here's an example i'll also put in the notes for you to save time all right our x okay we have three horizontal forces there f1 f2 f3 again denoted in different colors all right the values are subbed in there 35 plus 20 plus negative 30 all right and i'll leave up leave it up to you to get that answer okay should be very very straightforward all right now the magnitude of the results in vector i notice that we have a little triangle down there at the bottom. Okay, now we know the different sides of a triangle. We know that this side of the triangle we are is, is called the hypotenuse. All right, now first we need to measure the length of R, which is the resultant factor, accurately with the ruler. Do a conversion using the correct scale and give the answer in the correct unit. Now, the magnitude of the results in vector R can be calculated using Pythagoras. All right, now that's very easy. Notice when we calculate our results in vector, we will not be calculating measurements, but rather the units or the size that the other two vectors are in. So if we are working with newtons, we know the results in vector also has to be in newtons as well. So uh, let's take a look at a little example. All right, a log is attached to the back of a truck. A force of 700 newtons is exerted on the log by the truck. Uh, the cable is at an angle of 50 degrees to the ground. So let's calculate the component of the force parallel to the ground and perpendicular to the ground. Okay, so let's first just Let's get a picture. Let's get a picture. Let's draw a picture first, okay? So here we have our picture, okay, for the solution, all right? So Fx, all right, the force which is parallel to the ground, because that's the first uh, question that they ask us, okay? 700 is the force, okay? And let's just highlight the formula there. So the formula there for 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 calculating a resultant factor, okay, just as if we had a, just as if we had a working out trigonometry, all right, and we have a um, right angle triangle, exactly the same thing. We have two sides, so we're going to use a bit of trigonometry, okay. We'll look at this one here. F cos theta. We have the force, which is 700 newtons and we have our angle which is 50 degrees. All right, now if we put that in there into our calculator, we have a force, a horizontal force of 449,95 newtons horizontal to the direction of motion, okay? Now that's a very easy answer, very easy to calculate on our calculator. For the second question, calculate the perp force perpendicular to the ground. Now we know perpendicular is Ry, so Fy, same thing, is equal to F sine theta now, all right? So we plug those uh, degrees in, 700, or those values in rather, so 700 times sine 50 degrees in our calculator, very easy, and we know that that is 536,23 newtons vertically upwards. Now, notice in the first question, we did not know in which direction it was going. We did not know it was going south, east, west, etc., etc. Hence, if we do not have a specified direction, we'd answer, all right, with the direction, with the words in the direction of motion or in the direction it is moving, etc. 
With regards to the second question, we know that the perpendicular force will always go up, so hence vertically upwards is our answer. All right, excellent. Okay, so now that is all for the purpose of this uh, video, folks. Thank you so much for coming. This is the end of the grade 11 mechanics uh, vectors in two dimension. Hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for more topics in upcoming videos.